Hey, this is Mike with Christian Meds. This week I just want to talk a little bit about being halfway through my theological class, um, the Unseen Realm 101. So let's get started. So I just kind of wanted to give an update, kind of where I'm at. Um, so the big thing that this class teaches is it teaches through the book The Unseen Realm, which I've read that book. I've also read the same author's demon book, and I'm probably through the, the angel book. I've also read um, Reversing Herman, um, which is also related. But basically, what, the, what all this kind of theological teaching all kind of stems around is having a Deuteronomy 32 worldview, which basically, if you have this worldview, then you can deal with texts like Deuteronomy 32. You can also deal with texts like um, 1 Peter 3, and you can understand the backstory of what they're talking about enough to where you can have a coherent um, worldview on what they believed at the time they wrote the Bible. So, kind of what they believed in a nutshell. Let's just kind of talk about it. Um, you know, we all know that we live in a fallen world. And most Christians, when you talk about a fallen world, you think about Genesis 3. Well, Genesis 3, you know, is only part of the story. You know, the way... Michael Heiser um, lays it out, as he lays it out, it's Gen Genesis, Genesis 3, Genesis 6, and it's also Genesis 10, which is the story of Babel, um, the Tower of Babel, and, and, and the fraction, fractioning of nations. So, basically, what happened at Genesis 3 was the fall. We ended up, um, you know, we ended up no longer having the tree of life therefore we had a instead of being able to live forever with god in the in the garden and you know make the garden bigger throughout the world we ended up actually dying you know which was not god's original design he wanted us to be you know beings that could live with him forever you know so that was the first rebellion um caused by you know, a Satan figure, which, you know, represent, is representative of a, of a snake. You know, from his point of view, it's basically an adversary. It's probably a better way to describe what uh, corrupted Eve was an adversary of God. You know, rather than thinking of it as a snake or thinking of it as, a, as you know, just think of it as a supernatural being that, um, was an adversary of God. In other words, he was trying to rebel against God's um, authority. And then the second thing was basically um, the fall of the Watchers, which is described in Genesis 6, which gets filled in by First Enoch and also by Jubilees, which are two books that are not part of the canon. So are they divinely inspired? No, but they give you a backstory so that you understand that if the um, first century, second century Jewish people were reading these texts, maybe we should read them too, even if we don't treat them with the same authority. They at least fill in a backstory for us so that we understand a little bit better. So what that really did is it, it made a second transgression. So in other words, these watchers, which were part of the divine council, they ended up basically rebelling against God because they found women of human origin to be very attractive. So part of the whole thing with head coverings and all that type of stuff that you see in the Bible, that's all because they were trying to protect women from the watchers, was, was the way it's actually laid out. And then the third thing, basically, is the Tower of Babel, which was, um, 
which basically was the aspect when God fractured, fractured the human race, gave us different languages, and ended up basically making 70 nations, um, which then um, the Watchers even were, the Fallen Watchers were, were creating depravity there also. Um, so, you know, it also gets all tied into, you know, Noah's story where, you know, mankind had become so deprived that he ended up flooding a portion of the, of the earth, you know, which killed off a lot of the Nephilim, um, which they considered to be giants. Uh, I believe the giants did walk on this planet and, um, you know, part of the whole thing where you see genocide in the, in the Bible is actually, I think, God fighting against these giants that he never wanted to have as part of his design. It was actually the Watcher's fallen aspect, having free will, and them having sex with, with women is what caused these giants to happen and, and then also caused um, demons to happen. So, basically, it's not only our rebellion, it was also the rebellion of supernatural beings. And that's kind of one of the big things that, you know, most people don't talk about when it comes from a Christian perspective. So how did, how did God deal with all this? He dealt with this all with Jesus, when Jesus came. When Jesus came and was resurrected, it fixed the death issue. That's the first thing. When the Holy Spirit affixed itself to mankind, that helps us to fight our depravity because we get to now, you know, with the Holy Spirit, you know, within us, we get to try to really truly live out the greatest commandment, which is a lot of things that I talk about on this channel, is really trying to live out the greatest commandment. You know, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and treat other people the way you want to be treated if the rules are reversed. Um, and then the, the third thing was basically the fracturing of nations. Right? He cut up all the people into 70 nations, but then made a remnant through uh, Isaac, which then became, um, you know, the Jewish people, you know. That was part of his plan, but the other part was to basically graft in, you know, the Gentiles, which I'm a Gentile. So, um, that's how I get grafted in, and that actually is what fixes the frag fragmenting of nations over the long term. So all three of these things that basically got us in this deprived world, God has made a path for reconciliation and for mercy and grace for all of, all of that. Which I just think is just a, a wonderful way to think about this wonderful world view to have. And, um, you know, I'm getting more and more comfortable with it. You know, it seems very out there in a lot of ways. But it helps you deal with a lot of texts that you're like, what in the world are they talking about here? Especially if you read First Peter and it talks about the times of Noah, you know. So certainly Peter had this world view, you know, and I'm, I'm asking myself, shouldn't I have this too? So that's where I'm at so far. I've gone through the first eight weeks out of 15 on the first course. And um, I feel like I'm learning the material and um, it's all logically making sense to me. I, I wonder if it's making sense to anybody else out there. So that's my video this week. Have a great week. Have a blessed week. Talk to you next week.